Good morning, welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you how to turn a bodice pattern into a corset pattern ready to make a corseted dress. I'm using Berta pattern number 6776 which is this wedding dress pattern with a strapless boned bodice. When you're looking for a pattern to turn into a corset make sure it's got four panels so you need a front, a side front, a side back and a centre back. Some bodice patterns have this as one panel and it's much easier to get a better shape with your corset if you do have a side back seam here. Next I've found the four pieces that I need so my centre front, side front, centre back and side back are pieces one, two, three and four and I've cut them out from the pattern paper but I haven't actually cut out the size I've just cut them out roughly and from here I'm going to trace them which means I can reuse this as a different size if I need to in the future. Oh, so these are the four pieces that I'm going to now alter to make a corset pattern. Next you need to take your measurements. So you need to take your measurements at the fullest part of your bust. You need the measurement from your bust to your waist, your waist measurement, your hips three inches below your waist and your hips five inches below your waist. I find the easiest way to do this measurement and these two is to tie a piece of string or ribbon around your waist and you can measure up and down from it. Um, for this I keep my bra on when I'm measuring my bust because it's sort of holding me like I want the corset to hold me. For some corsets you need a lot more measurements than this but for this style of corseted gown that we're doing that's the measurements that I would use as my starting point. So once you've got your measurements you can kind of work out what size you need to trace off for your bodice pattern. Now according to this I'm a size 18, my bust is 39 inches so it's saying I'm an 18 in this pattern. If you've not used paper patterns before um, the sizing can be really off compared to um, what we know as, as dress sizing when we walk into a shop to buy something. So definitely go off your measurements and measure the pieces if you need to to work out what size you need rather than just cutting what you'd buy in a normal dress shop. Okay so these are my four pattern pieces so my front, side front, side back and back that I've traced off the pattern, the original pattern. Um, I've done this so I can reuse the pattern pieces with a different size if I need to. If you're not going to um, reuse your pattern you can just cut out the size you need at this point and use your paper pattern for this instead of making a copy of it like I've done because this is only going to get used for a few seconds to do the next the next part of transforming this pattern. But next on my paper I've drawn three lines. This one is the waist and this is for my hip measurements at three inches and five inches below the waist. Next I'm going to trace my original pattern pieces onto here and from there we can start the alterations to make it into more of a corset pattern. Okay so I've traced my pattern in red so we can see clearly what the original lines of the pattern are and then I've added a line at the fullest part of the bust which is actually seven inches above the waist which is what my measurements were so I'm not going to need to change the length at all hopefully. So I hope you can see this, my studio isn't set up the best, I can't, I've got no way of putting my camera overhead so you can see what I'm doing, so I'm kind of doing it at an angle, but hopefully you can see enough of what I'm doing to understand what I'm doing. So now we can start altering the pattern. Okay, so if we just go back to my measurements for a minute, we need to work out what our measurements at the bust, the waist and the three hip lines need to be for this half of the corset with the seam allowances. So I do a half inch seam allowance on my corsets, mainly because it's easier to work out. So to work out what your measurements here need to be, first of all div divide your bust, waist and your hip measurements in half. So my bust is 19.5, my waist is 16.5, my th hips at 3 inches are the same as my bust, so 19.5. And then hips at 5 are tw uh, 40, so that's 20. So next we need to add on the seam allowance on the pattern so it's easy to measure. So the centre front's on a fold and then we've got one inch, so half inch either side at the front side front. So two, three and half at the back. So we need to add on the 3.5 for the seam allowance that's in the pattern at the minute. Does that make sense? So you're adding on half inch for every seam. So we've got two seams at the side front, so that's an inch. Two seams at the side, so that's another inch. That's two inches. 
two seams at the side back so that's three inches and then a half inch at the center back so my half measurement plus the three and a half inches seam allowance on all the pattern pieces means that my measurements on my pattern need to be 23 at the bust 20 at the waist 23 at the hips and 23.5 at the five inch hip now my waist measurement is currently my natural waist measurement but I want some reduction because we're making a corset so I'm actually going to take two inches off that which will give me a four inch overall reduction so my waist measurement with the reduction I want is actually going to be 18 for this half of the pattern so the next thing I do at this point is measure across my bust waist and I, it's not long enough for the hips yet so I'm actually going to extend that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, by eye, curve this down. doesn't matter if it's not accurate at this point, but it just means I can measure these two and see how much I need to add or take off at the hips. So next, I'm going to measure across all my pattern pieces at the bust, the waist, the hips at three and the hips at five inches. And then I'm going to compare those totals to these measurements that we've just worked out. And then I'll know from there how much I need to add or take away at each of these lines on the pattern pieces. Okay, so my bust is 24 inches and I want it to be 23, so I've got to lose an inch there. So my waist is 21 and three quarters, and I want it to be 18, so I've got to lose three and three quarters off the waist. 25 and three quarters. I need to minus two and three quarters there. So 27 and a half. So I need to lose four inches at the bottom hip measurement. Okay, so now I know how much I need to take off or lose. I can start altering the pattern pieces. Is this is that gone out of focus? Can you see? I think my camera keeps going in and out of focus. I'm sorry about that. I don't know how to change it. All right. So the first thing I can do is I can see that this isn't going to fit around the bust. So I'll move the camera over so you can see what I'm doing here. So the first changes I'm going to make are around the bust and the centre front. You can see it's curving back out here. I don't want it to curve back out. I want that to come down straight. And I can also see from the pattern piece that it's not going to support me enough underneath my bust. So I'm actually going to start bringing that in just so it's tighter underneath my bust. At this point, it's a little bit of guesswork and then we'll make more alterations when I do my first twirl. So you can see originally it was like this. I'm actually curving it in from the fullness of the bust to there. And then I want this to be straight instead of curving out. So you can see we're already losing quite a bit of excess here. So I'm going to do that. So you can also change the size here if you need to at this point, depending on the fullness of your bust and what bust cup you wear. So I like that shape looks good so that's going to give a nice straight line up the front and then curve nicely under my bust and pulling it in here is going to give me more support and then I'm going to do the same this side it's hard doing this around a camera so I might have to even this up afterwards <laughs> then I'm going to bring that one in so it's straight as well so that's how my front and side front seams are looking now okay Sorry for the angle, yeah, I can't get my camera above it, but hopefully you can see enough to know what I'm doing here. So the next thing I'm going to do while I'm here is I, I want this to be a sweetheart. So I'm actually going to, from just past where the seam allowance is, I'm going to curve that down into a nice V shape. Remember this piece is cut on the fold, so that will give us a nice sweetheart V when it's opened. Next we're going to move to the side seam. So this is where we want that the nice curve on the waist to be. So we want this, this to come in and give us that lovely corseted shape. So I'm actually going to take in, I'm going to take this off three quarters of an inch. And then the same, I'm going to do maybe half an inch. Let's try half an inch 
on the side back seam as well. So now I've changed my side fronts and I've marked where I'd like the waist to be, I think, for the sides and side back. I'm going to measure my pieces again and see if I'm closer to my 18 inches that I've got here. So I'm just measuring up to those marks that I just made. Beautiful. And it's about 18 and a quarter at the minute. So I'm just going to take some off the centre back to bring that to 18. Alright, so now I'm happy with my waist measurements. I'm going to work on my bust. So, so even though when I did my bust measurements, it looked like I needed to take one inch off to get to my measurements, I'm actually going to leave it as it is at one inch bigger. Because when you're squishing your waist in a corset, sometimes all that squish goes it has to go somewhere so sometimes it goes upwards so you do need a little extra fullness here I'm wondering this might need to be a bit straighter but I'll work that out when I do a twirl see if that needs to come in but I'm actually going to leave the bust as it is for now so the next thing I'm going to do is draw a line from my new waist mark up like that to the top so that's my new side back seams from the waist up and this one will be my new side seams from the waist up. Okay, again, any questions, just ask me in the comments. Beautiful. So I'm happy with that and I'm happy with the shape at the top. I don't want to change that other than the centre front. So from now, I'm going to leave the back for now because we'll work on that in a minute. So now I'm going to work on the hips. So that's where our hips are at the minute. So I've already taken some off there. I'm actually going to remeasure because I took quite a lot off the front side front. I'm actually going to remeasure my hips and see what difference I need now. That's 24 and 25. Okay, so I still need to lose an inch at the three inch mark. So I think I'm just going to take a quarter of an inch off all four of these. And then again, I can now go from my waist. This is all very angular at the minute, but I'll, um, I'll smooth it out once we've got our measurements right. So that's my pattern pieces down to my three inch. And my five inch, I still need to lose 1.5. So I'm actually going to curve them like that. And then I'm going to make a twirl and we'll see what how it's going. I'm actually going to just put a little bit more curve on the waist here as well, rather than having that angle. And then I'm going to do the same here. So I'm going to just sort of curve that, curve that down like that. And again, do a nice curve the waist a bit as well so you can see the difference especially around the waist and the hips of the shaping we're going to get from the waist now so look at the original bodice pattern that was quite loose it wasn't very tight around the waist at all and here and especially at the the um yeah the front and side front so by taking all of this in and take it in under the bust it should be a lot tighter it should support the bust a lot more and then by taking it in around here this is going to give us the nice shaping at the waist that we want that the bodice pattern wasn't giving us before i'm happy with everything there so the last thing i need to do is just work on the center back seam a little bit and for now i'm just going to cut everything out down to this five inch seam i normally do my center back seams on my corset straight because i put straight steel boning in there yeah, I'm actually just going to draw this straight where I've got that and we'll work out with the twirl what we need to add or take away. Sometimes with dresses, it depends if you want your dress to zip up, you need to do this at the exact measurement and you can leave it curved because that's easier to put the zip in. So I'll start with this and then we can figure it out from there. Um, if you're doing just a corset, you can have your centre backs parallel. If you're doing a dress, you tend to want it to be more of a V shape because you need a zip at the bottom. So you need it to fit 
right together on the hip measurement but be wider at the waist than the top so you've got something to lace in so hopefully you can see from here what the whole pattern looks like and what the changes are from the original bodice so just to go over what I've done I've brought the top down I've left the bust as it is but taken it in under the bust and then straightened this center front seam I've taken it in at the waist at the sides and the side back and then redrawn the hips to get that lovely curve in over the waist and then over the hips compared to how loose the bodice was before it wasn't giving any shaping on the waist at all same with the side back seams as well and then the center back we've just straightened it and we'll yeah see how that goes in the twirl so now i'm happy with my pattern pieces i can get all of these cut out and i can use them to make my first twirl so in the next video i'll show you how i make the twirl and i'll show you how i fit it as well and then from there i'll show you how i make any changes to the pattern that are needed and i might need to do a second twirl as well to get the fit absolutely spot on um, it's worth taking your time to do small changes and make more twirls at this point because once you've got this base corset you can then alter this into any kind of dress that you want and um, you can bring because we've got it quite long and sleek on the hips you can bring it down into a tight fitting dress we can flare it from just below the waist for a ball gown dress as well so this is a really good base pattern to have so it's worth taking the time to get the fit absolutely spot on at this point I hope this made sense um, and I hope you can see it okay my camera setup's not the best and um, one day when I've got some money I'll rearrange this studio but if you've got any questions just leave them in the comments and I'll try and clarify what I've done for you thanks for watching please subscribe if you haven't already and um, feel free to come and join me over at my Facebook group feel free to come and share anything you've made as well I'd love to see what you're creating the links in the description and I'll be back soon with the next part to show you how I make and fit the 12.